Supplements, again, are designed for, to support a healthy diet, but you've got to be really careful with supplements, especially if you have a HIV diagnosis or a medication, because some of the supplements you take can interfere with the medication. All right. Hey peeps, this is Kaden. Welcome to episode 7 of the Diaries Behind How to Stay Positive When You Test Positive. Accessible source of information and advice for you or anyone else who is living with HIV and all from people who experienced it firsthand or who pioneer in corresponding areas. Today I have with me Daniel O'Shaughnessy, who is a registered nutritionist who specializes in LGBTQ plus well-being. Hey, thanks so much for making time for me. Thanks. Today. Hi. Good to be here. First of all, do we need LGBTQ plus specific nutrition? Do you know everyone asks me this? And I sometimes I've had people like on social, on the social media trolling me for this. Why are we different? We're all the same. I was like, well, yeah, we are, but we have health needs that are particularly tailored to our community. Like we have HIV nutrition, we have supporting people who are transgender, we have IVF therapy for lesbians, we have people that take steroids, which is steroids, more gay men take steroids. Five times more than straight, right? Yeah, and we also have, you know, a lot more club drug use, stimulant use, mm -hmm. identified as a gay man myself. And so I see firsthand the issues in our community. And so it's also turning it around and making it quite positive and like, look, you might be going through, you know, a period of drug use, it's like how to recover from that healthily. You might just test positive, you know, how can you support your body through that? Or you're considering going through transitioning and how so what actually goes through your body and how to manage that so I hear you nutrition is particularly one that I'm quite pissed off about because it's such a massive part of your general health mm. and like doctors don't really get it main thing when you see a doctor if you're test positive is to like stabilize you on, on, on right. medication and that's the priority you know then they can might give you the, the book on how to be healthy which is might be either like this for HIV or just a piece of paper on I got that book and it, either you're not going to read it or it's not applicable to you and you might not even know then what protein is you know might, might not know what carbohydrate mm. is and it's not your fault because you haven't been educated how to be healthy it, nutrition is a very individual thing as well no two people <clears throat> even with HIV will have the same symptoms. Some might have digestive issues with it, some might have you know, more fatigue. So it's about working around that and having you know, a bit more education. So don't be afraid to ask for help because it is there, but unfortunately some of the service help is a bit lacking. Would you suggest seeing a nutritionist if you're HIV positive? That everyone could benefit whether you're HIV positive or not when you're seeing a nutritionist. Sure. But on the same breath, and seeing a nutritionist is not something that everyone can afford. This is why I want to put a resource together for someone that hasn't got the available funds to see a nutritionist to be able to think, think oh, or, or that they can't actually, they feel a bit shameful about asking for help, but they can actually go and pick up a phone or something. And we're going to be talking about Daniel's book in a moment. Before that, would you quickly talk me through what potentially could happen to your body when you're diagnosed with HIV, um, so any kind of nutritional imbalances and so on, and also uh, then uh, medication? So I look at it in three ways. HIV in itself can have a bit of a toll on, on the body, whether it's stabilised or not. Deficiencies can, can occur as a result of HIV infection. These are things like vitamin B6, B12, um, copper, uh, selenium, zinc. So. You know, it's knowing what potentially could happen and making sure you're getting those foods in and managing that effectively. Uh, absorption issues can happen and there are some nutrients that are more better absorbed in fat than water. So if vitamins A, D, E and K, they can probably be an issue. A lot of people have digestive insufficiencies anyway, but this can be heightened with HIV. So it's about making sure you're, um, to, to rectify it, making sure you're consuming the right food not, not foods that you're reacting to, also chewing your food well. Many people don't chew their food and they just waft it down. I know I don't. And it's particularly if I get, I really get it, if you're, you have HIV and you're, di you're, you're not really that hungry, which can be a side effect, then it's going to be harder, but it's getting around that. So maybe like, you know, liquid pills might be a bit better. So smoothies, which can get all the nutrition in. And also then the medication side effects. So side effects from medication include diarrhea, loss of appetite, fatigue, um, weight loss. So it's all around taking those three uh, different factors and managing it. But also when, like we said before, if someone's HIV positive, fresh, and then they're given this nutrition book, they might not have a clue on how to eat. So they might be feeding the body with 
poor nutrition, mm. which is not going to do well for the body anyway, on top of the HIV diagnosis. Gotcha. So it's also looking at the body um, holistically. Uh, what holistically means looking at the whole body. Likewise, what I always say to people is, do a body scan. How do you feel? You know, are you having? Are you? Do you have like a, a digestive problem that you, you've been ignoring for years and years and years? Would that be the first thing you would do? What I think the first thing is to do is just stop and watch your body and think. You know, before you consider about what HIV medication medication side effects are and what um, deficiencies can occur on HIV, I think you've got to sit and think what's actually going on with my body right now. Before I was diagnosed with HIV, what am I? Am I questioning? You know, my digestive system. What's going on? Am I going to the bathroom six times a day? Am I, do I have poor skin? Do I have eczema, psoriasis? You know, all of this is you've got to you know, kind of get sorted. Do, do you believe those things can be addressed with nutrition? Absolutely, that's what I practice. Okay. So that's what I, the, the term I, well, the medicine I practice is called functional medicine. So it looks to find the root cause of these issues. So something like a skin condition like eczema or psoriasis can be coming from the gut. And then gut issues are a whole different, you know, all different ball game. They could be food sensitivities, not digestion of food properly, inflammation, not um, infections, all sorts. And this is both confusing and quite comforting to hear because we live in a culture that doesn't uh, doesn't encourage this. It encourages, you know, if you've got this condition, take this pill, take that pill, take this pill, take that pill, and eat all this sugar. You've been you taught that from the from the very beginning that you know rice krispies are the perfect breakfast when you're hitting your sugar level for the day at yeah. breakfast. It's insane. So like you know, obviously we're living uh, in this culture and experiencing these problems with our health, and we know something's wrong. And but hardly anyone is talking about the fact that the, we're just eating shit. This is the thing, and the marketing messages we're given is like you know eating shreddies or whatever keeps hunger locked up at lunch or a to breakfast biscuits very healthy for you but in actual fact it's the sugar and it normalizes yeah but we're taught this from the outdated evidence that we were told that fat was bad for us and we should all be eating the eat well plate and things like that and uh there's there's it's, we've moved on from that and so it's the main main thing is controlling the amount of sugar in your diet mm. that's the number one tip give anyone you just look at the sugar intake they're currently having because whether you've got HIV diagnosis or not the sugar is the killer. But we touched on some foods um, talking about foods to counteract the side effects you may be getting liver and kidney mm -hmm. and there's um, bone density there's diarrhea. Well when you start when you're getting diarrhea for example what would you suggest if someone is experiencing that apart from obviously talking to their doctor I mean, the first thing I was going to say is anyone experiencing any sort of side effect, you've got to speak straight away to your doctor and they can either change the medication, change the routine mm. and just speak out because don't just suffer in silence. But diarrhea for as a result of um, medication, you know, this is where I'm, this is one of my big points in saying that you know, this can mean low absorption, but also a lot of dehydration. So you're losing all the salts. You're losing all the salts, you're going to be tired, you're going to feel crap. So, you know, Look into you know making sh if you're having diarrhea using electrolytes. That's that's quite key. Regularly. Yeah. So you can buy these from the pharmacy or buy them from the health shop, and you can probably put some salt and some water because mm -hmm. they will help. But so sodium is a is, a, is an electrolyte. But you can't just rectify dehydration with pure water. Um, if you're having a lot of diarrhea, it's hard. It's, it's more advised to use um, use put a bit of salt in it. But you can you know you still got to make sure you're drinking two, three, two to three liters a day of water anyway, regardless of whether you're having diarrhea or not. And regardless of whether you have HIV or not. Exactly, so it's a general health to health, mm. issue, health issue. Eating oats or porridge is a great way to kind of help. Why is that? Well, it just helps bind a lot of the food up as well. But I would say also using fermented foods like natural yogurt, uh, kefir, kombucha, things like that are good probiotics for the gut, will help the gut environment itself. That's the kind of diarrhea Some side. Of, yeah. The diarrhea side of things. So another one is bone density and I did have <coughs> acute arthritis at the age of 29 mm -hmm. which was a year after I was diagnosed with HIV. That's interesting mm. and so I had a full body MRI like a year ago and I've been taking PrEP for two years and they said to me your bone density in your spine is a little bit less and I said I was like how you know and they said it's what it's possible that it could be due to your PrEP. I don't think we're still quite sure of what the side effects are. We don't know yet. There are some studies that are already showing that there may be side effects to <coughs> PrEP and this is, or, or ARD, and this isn't to say that you should be 
getting off it because there are so many reasons to be on PrEP or to be, I mean, the reason is HIV and uh, general wellness if you're HIV positive. Yeah. But I don't think we should be blind to it or kind of like trying to blind, out, blind eye on it. Well, it's the thing is, it's like managing, I mean, my PrEP trial is to look at the liver and kidney damage to see if there's any that's what they're researching oh yeah yeah, yeah. same so, with, when, with my meds they did the same thing they're doing it all the time but there's things you can do you could argue that someone who has a HIV diagnosis to uh, to, to go to the gym and bodybuild probably be very good for them rather than do cardio so I've heard this recently about like lifting heavy weights actually helps prevent osteoporosis and absolutely. stuff absolutely never even occurred to me that that's the case with bone density it's looking at you know you you, you, know, can you, you want to consider every factor uh, that could be linked to bone density other than your other than your medication so muscle building exercises like like those movements are very helpful for bone density, bone density. making sure your vitamin d is adequate and it's not about taking supplements liver and kidney i mean all your dark green leafy vegetables are very supportive for your liver health anyway. Uh, green tea is very supportive for liver health. It can lower any in, 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 lower elevated in, enzymes. So, um, even on blood tests, so it's very very research to show. Consuming bright colours, full of antioxidants, which help help you know, neutralise free radicals in the body. I imagine myself like going into the United Colours of Benetton and just like <laughs> feasting on the, like, colors. the fabrics. <laughs> um, yeah, exactly. One of the key things is making sure you get enough protein as well, because that will also support your liver. Mm -hmm. It will also support you know, the, the muscle wasting, the, you know, the what, weight loss, and the, if you're worried about not building muscle. So eat, you know, eggs are really good source of protein, um, and if you're a vegan then you've got to work to combine your proteins. That's a good, that's a good one actually because uh, I'm I feel like I'm heading in that well, I'm aiming to be a vegan at mm -hmm. some point and I've been advised against it um, and a lot of people don't feel like this is the right diet uh, necessarily if you're HIV positive. But what would you say a vegan needs to be aware of apart from combining protein? So the um, protein is the first thing, and I would say to make the iron is one thing and these the bit of vitamin B12. Vegan diets are traditionally whether there's, you know, leave HIV out of it, vegan diets, you need to supplement vitamin B12, which also can be a deficiency in HIV. So it's... All oh, right. So if you're HIV and vegan, it's one of the key and key nutrients you've got to be taking. So it's amplified, basically, yeah. well, that issue. You're not getting any. Right, you're not getting any. <laughs> so it's never good when you're not getting any. Vegans tend to take um, uh, B12 and iron. I've been taking, not because I'm a vegan, but I'm already kind of preparing. I've started buying a flaxseed and it's got like things that are rich in omega as well for energy. Because when you're a vegan, it tends to yes. kind of lag. But the thing is with the flaxseed, it sits at the top of the conversion pathway and has to go boom, 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 boom to get yeah, the active ingredient. So flaxseed will sit at, so imagine like the omega-3 is like a staircase, okay? So at the top, you've got the flaxseed and to get where oily fish is, you, you, it's the bottom of the staircase, and it has to go through a number of different steps to, Processes to, 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 turn, to turn into what the equivalent of fish would be. So, but you can actually also use DHA uh, algae. Oh yeah, so that's example. actually better yeah. than using flax. Use both. I think we even with your omnivore or a vegan, you both need flaxseed and and the EPA for DHA. And in one, in one of our conversations, you did mention that a whey protein is very good if you're HIV positive. Yes, is two that... things for this. It's a very great functional food. Um, it helps increase something called glutathione in the body, which is uh, one of the body's master antioxidants. It's very good for your immune system, good for detox, good for, you know. So it naturally is in the body anyway, but it helps increase the numbers. Mm -hmm. um, and also it's a good, easy way to drink protein when you're not hungry. I guess so, yeah. yeah. What would you suggest if someone can't, is lactose intolerant, for example, or doesn't eat whey protein? Is there a replacement for that? For if they're that? lactose intolerant, they can get whey protein with the enzymes in it. Lactase enzymes, that's what it means. Okay. If they can't tolerate whey at all, then um, there's different forms of protein out there. There's vegan proteins, which combine all the prote plant-based proteins. So they combine a number of different proteins to make it equivalent of whey. <laughs> And there's also collagen protein, there's all sort of different types. So. Can I show you my protein shake and yeah. you will tell me what you think about it? One sec.
Okay, so okay. this is Vega. I like Vega. They're good. You do? Okay. Yeah. So what they do is they probably pack over. They pack some vegetables in here, antioxidants. Oh, the Vega Sports is very good. But there's a Vega Sports as well. Yeah, the Vega Sports got a bit more protein. So on the back of the packet, you want to just first of all look and see how much protein it's providing. So. Per portion, it should be around 20 to 30 grams, okay. so it's quite good. The other one without all the additions, like all the greens and stuff, is 25 grams. But yeah. I sacrificed that to get the additional... I mean, 20, 25, it's like whatever, you know. Uh, but the good thing about, this is a good one, they, don't, they sweeten it with um, stevia rather than sucralose. They put a bit of marine algae in there for your omega-3s, there mm -hmm. you go. And um, what else do I like? They're just, they're just good, quite, it's quite good quality, but they'll always state on the vegan one that it's complete protein. So if it's complete protein, it means it's got all the amino acids, which are the building blocks of the protein. This isn't. This is good, yeah. This is complete this is protein? Good. Yeah, so it says here, from a complete multi-source protein. Ah, okay. So they use pea, flax, seed, and hemp. Some mm. use pumpkin seed, um, oh, I'm sorry. rice protein, and all sorts. So, so um, but the only thing with this, vegan proteins can sometimes be a bit tough on someone digestive system. So in that, if that happens and you're not a vegan, just use collagen protein. How would you know? Well, you take it and you get bloated. Uh, yeah, yeah. I do. Maybe change the brand because it could just be the brand. Okay, so you might not be vegan after all. There's so many other brands out there. Okay, so this is what I take. Um, this isn't product placement because this is just very randomly what I use. Yeah. Um, and There's um, Form, there's uh, one called Mefil, which is very good. Sun Warrior, Nutrivia, or... Okay. There's a, just look on, I mean, the key thing is just to make sure it's complete protein. And there will be some links in the description for you. And don't to overdo look. the whey protein shakes. So just like one or two a day is fine. What happens when you do? They can get a bit farty in the bar. A bit smelly. So. Clear the room. So whey protein is one of HIV specific foods. Um, there are some others. Yes. So the term functional food is food fit for a purpose. For HIV, great functional foods are um, turmeric. Because there's lots of studies and research to show it. It has antiviral activity. Very, very good for supporting the body, in general health anyway, but really, really good for HIV. It's right. Using um, the Asian mushrooms. So these are things like inoki, shiitake, any Japanese mushrooms you can you can use. Put them in a stir fry, as, you know, use them like maybe three times a week. Uh, you can get them from the supermarket anyway, but these are rich in beta-glucans, which are really, really amazing for your, it's one of the best things for your uh, immune system. And any supplement, really like HIV targeted supplement, there's not many, but will use beta glucans in it for any immune system support. How do you feel about HIV specific supplements? HIV? Well, it's probably not actually a specific HIV complex because the, the supplements, you, supplements again are designed for, to support a healthy diet. But you've got to be really careful with supplements and always, 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 especially if you have a HIV diagnosis or medication, that you've got to. Um, like speak to your doctor about taking supplements because some of the supplements you take can interfere with the medication. They can bind with it and make it a lot well, less effective. Like if you know if you're taking like a fiber powder, it can, you don't ever take the fiber powder or need like a like psyllium husk. You don't take that with the medication because it can take you two hours away from it. Oh, I find that so interesting because anyone who's like pure for men, for example, they're yeah. advertising it to a population uh, where HIV is rife. Mm -hmm. No one is mentioning anything about that. Well, they're going to get sued if someone starts, you know, they're... they're it will be me. <laughs> <laughs> but the thing is, you've got to be really careful because even I discussed this with my prep trial doctor and she was like, look, it's okay. I'm, I'm happy for you to take this, but take it two hours away from your um, HIV medication. So I just put mine in, it's like a psyllium husk. I don't bother with it for pure men, but I put it in a protein shake and have that after the gym. And that different medication in the morning. Different medications will have different yeah. in, in, uh, contraindications. You know, just speak to a, someone who's you know knowledgeable in the subject. You can look up the interactions on the natural medicine database, or, or you know, at the end of the day, the doctor has the final say. Don't mm -hmm. override the doctor. I'll see, you question the doctor. Anything to add for HIV functional nutrition? Uh, I think one of the things we don't do as a society is some sort of tai chi or mindfulness or meditation. Tai chi, tai chi's been researched around supporting the immune system and meditation. So, and also it calms that person when they're freshly diagnosed, or freshly positive. So it's like, you know, when-, when Newly you're, diagnosed. And yeah, when you're, when you're newly diagnosed and you're, you know, you're stressing out, just try and do some sort of thing to soothe your brain, just calm. 
So that was a little bit about HIV specific nutrition. More about this and other aspects of nutrition you can find in a book which Daniel is writing right now. I wanted to put a resource together for the LGBTQ plus community, which is inclusive content uh, so someone can just pick it up and learn. You know, whether it's, for instance, like they're taking chems and they want to recover from the chems, not have so much of a come down, or they're thinking about taking steroids, or you know they want to have a healthier sex life and want to understand you know, how to how to clean properly and things this like is that. It's amazing and so not done. It's not. No like, one I does would know where to look for it. Nobody does it, and you lead so much crap online. So I've gone with this crowdfunding publisher, and at this present time of filming, we're halfway. I'm currently looking for anyone that wants to buy the book um, to pledge for a copy on the website. You can uh, find that link in the description below. And there's different <laughs> pledge levels and it's from £10 for an electronic copy, £20 for a hardback. Yes. And that will be, uh, you know, and, and when the book's funded and published, it will go in all bookshops as an LGBTQ Amazing. plus Bible. Great, Very this is great. And um, also we'll be doing another video um, which is going to elaborate on uh, the content of Daniel's book. Moving on to Karen. Karen represents the current format of our health system which fails to cater to sexual minorities, people of color, sex workers, drug users. Generally though, our health system also notoriously fails to promote healthy nutrition, which is such a massive part of uh, our general health and I know that you have a request for Karen. We do. My request for you is to educate service workers on HIV or even LGBTQ plus nutrition. People have problems and they're not aware of where they can get information from. They're given a leaflet when they go to a service. Uh, so getting good quality nutrition education into services would be ideal, whether it's around HIV nutrition, whether it's around uh, people taking chems, whether it's someone transitioning uh, and having some hormone support in terms of nutrition. Nutrition can do a lot alongside any medications and the natural and the medical route. That's it. Bye, Bye Karen. Karen. Bye, girl. What social media can we find you on? Uh, I'm on Instagram as at the Naked Nutritionist. And that's in the description for you if you want to follow Daniel. So that's it for episode 7 of The Diaries Behind How to Stay Positive When You Test Positive with Daniel O'Shaughnessy. Um, the main project is going to come at you later this year. And in the meantime, keep an eye on the next episode, which is going to be with you next month. If you like this content, if you want to hear more from me, if you want updates on this project or anything else I'm doing, please subscribe and turn on the notifications. I couldn't stress this enough. I will see you soon. Take care. Eat well. Today I have Daniel O'Shaughnessy, who is a registered nutritionist, almost a sex offender, <laughs> who specializes in LGBT, kurva man, piss off.